Hello, uh, this video is about establishing control on site on a small site where you're not given any controls already. So you go to the site and there's nothing for you um, to come from, no control, no coordinates, anything. So for example, you have a site like this. It is next to another adjacent property, say like house number 25, you're in house 27, and there's a house 29, say next um, to you. And they've demolished this house 27 and they want to redevelop it and build again. And you have no control, there's no stations, there's nothing given. But what the architect has told you, for example, will tell you the distance between this house and this house, for example, should be 1.5 meters. And for example, I want this house to either line up, so let's say he wants to line up with the next door house, make it easier. So what he's telling you, I want this face of the building to line up with this face of the building, and I want to be one and a half meter here, and for example, I want to be four meters here between these houses. And that is all the information you have for setting up, say, this rectangular building. So for example, let's assume that the overall distance is, say, 20 meters, for example, by 10 meters. That is your square building, you throw it set up, 20 meters, 10 meters. And let's say that you do check and the distance between them is exactly 25, 20, 24, 25.5, 25. And you verify that the distance between the two houses is 25.5, so these will actually work. If it didn't, you go and tell the architect, hang on, I can't achieve that. I can either achieve this one. Well, I won't achieve that one or achieve this one, I have to reduce this one. What do you want me to do? Either the distance is too much, therefore I'm getting more, or the distance is too little, I have to reduce one of these. So let's say assume you've done it and the distances are correct. Now what you do, the first thing you do, you establish a, co a retro coordinate system for, the, for your own building. So for this one, let's say this, I call it point A, point B, point C, and point D. So establish a coordinate system, point A, B, C, and D, easting and northing. A, I give it, for example, easting 100 meters and northing of 200 meters. B will have the same easting, would be 100 meters, and the northing would be 200 plus 10, would be 210 meters. C will be easting of 100 plus 20, would be 120 meters and north will be 200, sorry, 210. And D will be 120, and the north 200. So, the first thing I do, I establish a control uh, based on the dimensions on the drawing. I establish a coordinate for the four corners of the building, and I'll write them down here. And then I will work out the coordinate for this corner. This corner, the east end will be 1.5 less, therefore it will be 98.45. So if I call this one E, and this point here, F, E will have east end of 98.5 and the north end of 200. And F will be uh, 124 and northing of 200. So based, once I've decided on the uh, coordinates for the corners of the building, I can work out the coordinates for these two, because I've already decided that's 100, plus 20, 120, plus 4, 124, and they're supposed to be in line, therefore the northing will be the same. And now, what I do now, I go set up somewhere on site, for example, I set up here, anywhere on site, physically possible, on this side, that side. And I'll do a free station. So I'll put, a, I'll put one of these retro targets, I peel one off, and I stick in the corner of this building, or I get my chamber to hold it on the corner of the building. And I just do the free station program. I do the free station program, and so I simply measure this distance. So I measure the distance to this one, and then I measure the distance to F. 
So I say first point is E, and then second point is F, and that will calculate for me the coordinates for the instrument in relation to the system. And then from them, I can set out A, B, C, and D. Go to the um, set out program. I have the coordinates already established, so I set out A, B, C, D from there. All from one setting, one setup, uh, set them out. And then if the building has different patterns, different corners, or whatever, I can set up more points. Now at this point, once I've done it, I will establish more retros around the site. Say, for example, on this side of the road, there are, there is a, there's a footpath, this is a road, there's a footpath. I go maybe on the, uh, on, a lamp, on a lamp post or on a wall or somewhere. I put a retro target. So I stick one of these retro targets across the road, another color, for example, R1. Another side of the road, another one, R2. Another one here, another one, R3. So from once I'm here, I start to as many of these, and I work out the coordinates. So in my book, I will end up with the coordinates for the corner of the building, the coordinates for the initial reference points, and the coordinates for the retros. So R1, R2, R3, R4, Easting, northing. So I'll end up with a table with the coordinates for each retro. So next time I come in, if I come tomorrow, or if I come after breakfast, or I come in next month, I've got these retros already fixed to walls or columns or to lampposts, and I can do a free station and continue setting out. I don't, so because here may not be available anymore, they may have excavated here or whatever, or they may have parked the machine in here, I can't see this anymore. So essentially, for me, finished with the ENF. I now have retros around the site scattered to do my, so my own control. So that's how you establish control on small sites where you have uh, information, initial information, what you need is from the architect to tell you how far you are from the, pro, uh, from the next door building or from the road or from the curb. So for example, your building is here, the adjacent properties are here, and you have a road, he might tell you, by, instead of he might tell you instead of how much these line up, you must say, I want to be two meters from the curb line. And I also want to be four meters from this house. And that's all you get. I want four meters from this house, and I want to be parallel to the road, two meters from the road. So you get some sort of information about how to set out this house in relation to one of, either to one of the buildings or both of the adjacent properties, or to the uh, curb line or the road or to whatever. That's all the information you need. I need two dimensions to set out that building. Um, and then also you need to establish a level. So there might be a topographic, again, a topographic survey of the site already. Or um, you might choose, for example, there's a manhole in there. There's an existing manhole. Let me call that manhole level as, say, 10 meters for a height of 10 meters, and then I use that for my level survey of the site or whatever, and then uh, the architect will know, or everyone will know that that is the level. Now, you might already have levels for the drawing. Uh, the, the architect has done the floor levels or sections and elevation, and from that section elevation, you might also show, for example, the levels for these manholes or gullies around the site. Uh, so for example, there's a manhole. He will give you a manhole one, cover level, invert level. Cover level is the key. Cover level is the top of the manhole. So you go from that one, the level you've given, you establish your height, and um, that would be how you test them. So you might have a manhole two as well, another cover level given. So you can check one manhole against the other to make sure they are correct. So you don't go for one and assume that's correct. You might have more manholes with levels, cover levels given, and you check them to ensure that you have established the correct height. Because if there's any excavation, you must give them a level to excavate. So you need to establish your height uh, also. It's not all about position, but it's also about height. 